All right, continue. I am using a trackpad on a laptop. And right now I'm at a pretty small brush. I'm using that grass brush and mixing between foreground and background colors. So I'm putting in some of these shadows and some of that just using it as kind of a texturing brush. But there's always the danger of overusing it, but that's why I use my custom brush over the top. Now, every time you use the brush, it saves it in your history, right? So that's why I have 500 history states under preferences and performance. Actually, I have 364, but usually I have around 500. And you can up your, your RAM usage, right? But it also means you should save your work quite a bit just by hitting Command S. Because if the brush ever lags or starts to slow down from all this heavy load, then you want to restart Photoshop and it will clear that history and clear that cache. You also need to have enough uh, hard drive space free. So I got a question this week about an error saying that your scratch disks are full. Now the scratch disk is just your hard drive on your device. It could be a phone, it could be a tablet, it could be a computer. And what happens is, as we fill up our hard drive, let's see what my hard drive is right now. As we fill up our hard drive with media and with different stuff, you know, I have a 221 gigabytes used. This computer is a tiny computer. This is an old computer. It's only got 250 gigabytes. I would much rather have a terabyte. But you need to have, you know, around 30 gigabytes free for Photoshop in order to not uh, have some of the storage space issues. Now, just the operating system is 61 gigabytes. And then you'll see that my iTunes, which is where my music is and stuff, is actually pretty small. Most of us, if we look at this, our media, like our movies especially, on like a terabyte hard drive, take up just a ton. I have a lot of documents because this is my work computer, but um, you want to try to cut that down. The easiest way is just deleting movies that you've already watched to keep your hard drive from seizing up on you. And then the big problem with not having enough scratch disk space is you won't be able to save your work. All right, so I'm gonna move off of this grass brush. Well, maybe I'll use a little bit of it over here. Just building that base texture. But when you use a color mixing brush, remember you have to choose both the foreground and the background color for it. Some of these shadows. and trying to keep in mind the big picture. Working about 50% opacity now. And when you're softening an edge this way with a little dry brush, that's called feathering, softening it out. Now I'm going to go back to my brush. And just remind you of all the features that are so helpful for it. 
So I like texture and I like angle jitter and I like size jitter. And this is harder edged. So this will help me kind of define the edges I want. And I'm going to move that mouth a little bit closer. So try to limit how many brushes you use and then try to really understand what they're good for in your project. And try not to use them too small. You should always use your brush a little bit bigger than you're comfortable with. A lot of it's kind of refining and framing in shapes. If I use just a texture brush alone, that's not going to let me really make those strong decisions. And if I use it at too low an opacity, it's not going to have that strength either. And often this part of digital painting, it's just what I think of as is acting and reacting. So you put something down and then you kind of steal color from it. I'm using option to steal color and then you react to it. It's like, oh, that's too dark. I need to, to, to wash over it with something lighter. Oh, that's too bright. And every time you overlap it with this low opacity soft edge brush, it's making the texture more appealing feeling like a more considered painting. So you're encouraged to keep that going. So you've kind of framed in the mouth now in a way I like. Kind of framed around the eyes a little bit with that soft edge. And I'm using all pretty believable colors. I'm not stealing colors so much from the photo anymore because they're all already in the piece so I can just steal them from myself. I threw that blue and that green in there and I could throw a little bit of warmth and red in there too. I'm going to mix that in. But there's other ways to play with color that might be more satisfying. But this is digital painting not digital coloring so you can definitely you know, play with full spectrum here without too much worry. A little red in here. And then I think I'll finish off the jaw with that texture brush, but not right now. Because now that I have kind of a finish to the face, pretty much that I like. I need to soften it up here. That grass brush is just working on its own, and that might work at the very tips, but it doesn't match the rest right now. I'm trying to get that finish overall. And I like seeing it in the navigator really small. You know, you can see how it comes together from a distance. It's just getting poofy. And it reminds you that you've got more painting to do than just the face. Right. It's easy to get hung up on the details that are fun. So I'm going to frame in the ear here. And then work to do that on the other side as well.
And I've learned that painting with a trackpad is a little tough on the wrist. It's a good experiment to see that you can do these these techniques without a stylus and still be pretty effective at it. It doesn't need to take forever. So those of you who have taken a painting class, you'll be kind of familiar with how paintings come together. It's a little mysterious. You just work and work and work, and eventually they look better. <laughs> But knowing when you're finished is, is really, really difficult. And so, and you're so caught up in it, you know, while you're doing it, which is good. So I recommend you save whenever you have that thought, you kind of look around for other things to inspire you. If we were in class, I would have you walking around and seeing other people's process, because that's always very helpful because all of you will digitally paint differently than, than anyone else. Um, but for this, you might you know just get up, get some coffee, walk around a little bit, and then see your painting with new eyes. By doing these videos, which limit themselves to 15 minutes, it kind of gives me a nice perspective, because if I just charged ahead and just painted all the way through, I would prob more than likely start going down some paths I didn't like and not really realize it until it was too late and I wasted some time. That's why the navigator is nice. In traditional painting, a lot of painters will put a mirror uh, next to their easel, especially if it's a large scale painting. So they can look at the image in the mirror to help give them some distance on it without having to walk you know, far away and waste that time. So the navigator kind of does that for us on its own. And different, I've seen digital painters, because this has been an art form, it's been around for a while. Um, they have a lot of different methods for dealing with that. There is a way you can have two, the, and I'm not sure if it's an extension you put onto Photoshop or if it was a special feature in, in the long lost edition of Photoshop, but it used to be you could have a file open in two places at once. So as I'm painting, I could see how the painting looks smaller. It's basically what the navigator does. Okay, so feathering and moving away from the head now. I'm going to keep my brush pretty big, even though it's a little bit bigger than, than feels what would be easiest. So I can always reshape it and paint around the marks. Right? You're dealing with shapes here, not just filling in between sketched lines like with digital coloring. Keeps happening. So you can see how repetitive it is. You're using option all the time. You can change your opacity and your, your brush um, width a lot if you want. It's not something I usually do a whole lot of. These are the kind of the shortcuts you can build into your keyboard and your Photoshop preferences. You can create your own shortcuts.
this point, I'm actually 